So the first one is from Marcus. Uh, the question is, do I have any concerns about upper limits for soy intake? Um, do I have any issues with getting, you know, a pretty substantial amount of your, your protein coming from soy? And the question asks, you know, up to like 1.6 or 2.2 grams per kilogram, all coming from soy protein. Usually when people ask this question, they have two concerns that are somewhat related. Uh, the first concern is about the potentially estrogenic mm -hmm. side effects, uh, related to soy isoflavones. Uh, and then people wonder, you know, is there potentially going to be some kind of like feminizing impact from, uh, from this estrogenic stuff? And then secondarily, and, and, we'll, then, and then the second, uh, opposite concern is of course, will it make my dick too hard? Correct. Yeah. The secondary concern related to that is, will it impact hypertrophy? You know, oh, to some extent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Never mind. Sorry. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's a question that comes up a lot and, What's really Will interesting? It make my whole body too turgid. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> the thing that is interesting about this is that I see a lot of answers that are extremely definitive one way or the other, and I kind of uh, aim for the middle ground a little bit. So here, here's what I can say, and I'll, I'll post some links in the description of today's show. Uh, great study by our friend Cody Hahn, who's a, a stronger by science coach. Uh, he, he did a ton of really great work uh, when he was working on his PhD out at, uh, at Auburn. Their lab does some really fascinating stuff. But uh, they were looking at different types of protein supplementation. Uh, and in this case, uh, I think the, the title kind of gives it away. The paper is called Soy Protein Supplementation is Not Androgenic or Estrogenic in College-Aged Men When Combined with Resistance Exercise Training. So even at doses up to about 80 grams per day of soy protein, uh, they did not observe any estrogenic effects uh, that that would be physiologically meaningful. Uh, there's also a meta-analysis of 15 randomized controlled trials that I'm aware of indicating that uh, soy protein supplementation had no significant effect on total testosterone, free testosterone, uh, or sex hormone blind, uh, binding globulin. Uh, and within those RCTs, uh, the, the, the soy protein content was typically between 10 and 70 grams of soy protein, uh, and the isoflavone content, which is what people are largely focused on was between like 60 to 240 milligrams. So based on that, a lot of people say there's absolutely no connection there, uh, under no circumstance, could there be a, a concern or, or, uh, should it be a consideration whatsoever? I'm not quite prepared to go that far just because like we've talked about this in various places, but I tend to be more of an empiricist. Uh, you know, I, I, I like empirical arguments more than trying to rationalize my way to an argument. So when I can lean on empirical data, I much prefer to, I feel more comfortable with it. Um, so I feel very com extremely comfortable that with doses up to like 80 grams a day of soy protein, I really don't have concerns, especially if the isoflavone content of that soy protein product is staying within that range I mentioned. Uh, there are a couple case studies that have been published. Case studies, you take them with a grain of salt, but uh, you know, people who are consuming up to like 360 milligrams of soy isoflavones per day for like six to 12 months at a time, where uh, they, they have noted some adverse effects uh, that that could be considered a bit estrogenic in nature uh, or kind of linked to these estrogenic concerns. So um, there are case studies out there uh, and you can put whatever stock you want into those, but uh, up to like 80 grams a day, I feel extremely confident. Uh, and then when it comes to the hypertrophy stuff, uh, I mentioned that that study previously, looking at hypertrophy over the course of a uh, 12-week resistance training program. Um, the, the, the vegan group who was supplementing with soy protein uh, had extremely similar uh, training adaptations in terms of hypertrophy. So leg lean mass, whole muscle cross-sectional area, muscle fiber cross-sectional area, strength, all those training adaptations were quite similar and they were getting 0 0.8 grams per kilogram per day, uh, purely from soy protein. Um, it, it did just based on their weights. It, I think it ended up being at like 57 or 58 grams a day. So just from an empirical perspective, I feel extremely comfortable, you know, that up to 80 grams a day or, you know, up to like half of your protein for the day coming purely from soy, uh, 
simply doesn't seem to be an issue for any of any concerns within this kind of umbrella of topics. Uh, when you start doubling those numbers, I simply don't know. Uh, I don't know if you have a strong opinion on that, but um, I, I like to be more guided by empirical evidence when possible. And this just kind of seems to be where it ends in, in controlled trials is with doses up around 80 grams a day. Here's what I have a strong opinion about. So a couple of times friends have come over and I've been making little treats. Okay. Uh, I, you know this story. You were here. Um, so make, making some little treats uh, like uh, like fried chicken, either chicken wings or like little uh, uh, like popcorn chicken or whatever. And then for vegetarian and vegan friends, some... Uh, similarly either battered or breaded and fried and then sauced soy puffs yes and i gotta say it, th this is coming from a completely inveterate omnivore that loves meat i like it it's good the fucking fried soy puffs are are better than every other meat option that has been available every time that i've uh like prepared and fried and sauced the same thing like yeah uh the, the soy puffs beat out chicken uh they beat out like I, I made some just insane fried meatballs but then also made some fried soy puffs the fucking soy puffs were better i gotta say man culinarily they're they're incredible because they're just like they're they're puffs there's a lot of air in them they can soak up any flavor uh they have an excellent texture and mouthfeel so um yeah, uh, my only strong opinion about soy is that if you're if you're an omnivore and you're a foodie and uh, you have some vegetarian or vegan friends coming over and you're like, ah, like, I don't know what sort of of meat substitute or meat alternative to have. If you were going to make a little a little fried treat, uh, just just using whatever recipe you were going to use otherwise, but subbing in whatever meat option you were going to have for soy puffs. Swear to God, best decision you'll ever make. And you will probably also like the soy puffs better than than the meat option. They're they're so good. They're incredible. You know, another time that happened, uh, there have been some cases where you've made uh, a mushroom-based version of something uh, as opposed to a meat-based version. There have been instances where the mushroom version is better. Uh, mushrooms are also very good. Mushrooms are very good. So I think a lot of people, when they consider... Uh, you know, incorporating more vegetarian meals. They're like, well, I have officially departed from fl flavor town and I can never go back. Uh, and that's really not the case. Uh, there, there's some really nice options, but, uh, just to kind of put a little anecdote on top of this, uh, you know, I still consume whey protein for, I believe reasons we've discussed on the podcast. Like I think, uh, from a ethical and environmental standard, uh, viewpoint, it kind of fits within my, uh, I'm comfortable with it from from those perspectives, uh, just because a, a lot of the way that goes into whey protein powder seems to be essentially just a byproduct of conventional dairy food production that they're they're just gonna kind of get rid of either way. Uh, so I don't lose a lot of sleep over having a lot of protein coming from whey protein supplements, but I do eat a lot of soy protein coming from things like soy crumbles. That that's my main source of soy protein that I get often. Have I ever? once counted how many grams I'm getting from soy? Absolutely not. Uh, so I, I try to separate out like from a purely empirical point of view, there are case reports trending in that direction with extremely high intakes and very well controlled trials showing no such effect up to about 80 grams a day. Would I start getting nervous if I had a hundred grams a day coming from soy products? I definitely wouldn't. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable that unless you have a truly anomalous intake of soy, uh, you're probably not going to run into these types of concerns. That that would be my my estimation. But to make that estimation, you do have to deviate from the empirical evidence a little bit.